Where does this show error? Hi, welcome to Arts Alive. I'm Walt Height, and today we're not just going to be talking about film, we're going to be talking about a film festival, the McMinnville Short Film Festival. And with me here to discuss it today are two members of the festival organization, uh, Heather Older and Zach Putnam. Putnam, thank you. That's right. Uh, before we get going, uh, let me find out a little bit about, about you. Uh, Heather, how long have you been involved with the, the festival? Sure. And where do you come from? Um, <laughs> where do I come from? Where I'm originally from? from New Jersey, <laughs> but lived in LA for most of my life um, and came up to Oregon. Um, I actually am a filmmaker and I had a short film premiere at the McMinnville Short Film Festival, I think it was three years ago, four years ago, um, and just loved this festival so much as so, so many of our visiting filmmakers do. And um, I ended up volunteering last year with Nancy Morrow, mm -hmm. um, who is the founder and running the festival, along with her husband, Dan. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> um, she let me know that she was going to step away from sort of the, all of the logistical side <laughs> mm -hmm. of the festival. And so um, I was just ramped up and ready to, to jump in here and, and continue this festival and, and take it to the next level, basically. So it just, it just kind of worked out that way. Mm -hmm. And Zach is not necessarily part of our organization, but oh, okay. he is <laughs> one of our featured filmmakers in this year's showcase and in so many of our showcases. It makes amazing short documentaries. Yeah. Well, Zach, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, thanks for having me, first of all. Sure. And uh, yeah, I'm a Portland-based documentary filmmaker. And I sort of specialize in short form stuff. So when I discovered this festival, I thought, wow, this is a perfect home for my work. And you know, if you look around, if you snoop around online, the reviews for this festival, especially from the filmmakers who attend, are always just absolutely stellar. People mm -hmm. glow about this festival. The way that they treat the filmmakers is really above and beyond almost any other festival I've, I've been a part of. Mm -hmm. So I have um, had films in the festival. I should have counted before I came, but at <laughs> least five years running, I would say. I've had a film or two uh, show in this festival, and it's always a great time. I always love coming out here. It's just a great town and a great vibe and so many other amazing films to watch. So, And uh, are you exclusively a, a documentarian? Pretty exclusively, yeah. Um, I pretty rarely work with actors, um, bless their hearts. But uh, I work mostly in the nonfiction realm. Um, I think there's a lot of true stories out there worth telling, so mm -hmm. I managed to stay pretty satisfied there. I actually make my living mostly by being commissioned by nonprofits and NGOs to create a short documentary about the work that they're doing or someone that they helped or something like that. So yeah, you know, occasionally there'll be like a reenactment or something in a documentary okay. I'm making, but uh, sure. pretty strictly nonfiction storytelling for me. Well, let me put you on the spot then. Can you just, <laughs> can you tell me of a, a couple of the films that uh, you've entered in the festival in the past? Well, gosh, in the past, I can think of, um, I had a, a short film I made called The Kenton Lead Blob, which was about uh, my neighborhood researching a report of lead contamination in our neighborhood. And we all got the neighbors to take soil samples and submit them to the lab and try to figure out where this lead contamination was coming. It was sort of a, uh, a science thriller documentary. <laughs> and I've also had a, a film called Sonic Story, which was about um, Canine Companions as an organization we okay. work with a lot and who actually we have another film featuring them this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one was about uh, dogs that were trained for Canine Companions uh, in the Coffee Creek Women's Prison uh, here in Oregon. And it was just kind of amazing to go into the women's prison and see how these inmates were actually raising these puppies up to help people as service animals later. So that's a couple that jumped to mind. I remember the Kenton film. Oh, wow. <coughs> uh, four or five years ago? Yeah, it's kind of yeah. going back there. Yeah, good memory. <laughs> so, so Heather, what are your main duties now that, uh, 
<laughs> um, Besides being chief cook and bottle washer. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's the type of role that wears a lot of hats. So um, everything from screening to organizing the judging panel, um, which we have amazing judges this year, um, to fundraising and all of the grant writing and all of those are types of responsibilities that keep the keep the f festival going, mm -hmm. um, and just the entire event planning for the festival and to take care of our filmmakers. And um, we have a couple great um, panels this year. We have a producers panel featuring Peter Billingsley and uh, Tara Mettinger. We also have breakfast with a filmmaker, which is new for us, um, Sean Parker, who's also a Portland-based filmmaker. Um, and is recently uh, funded by the Portland Art Museum. He has a new series. It's like a stop motion finger puppet show um, called Fogtown, um, but he's using some cutting edge technology to film the way he's filming it. So it's really interesting. So that'll be on Friday, sun, excuse me, Sunday morning mm -hmm. at the Gallery Theater. And there'll be breakfast and coffee and mimosas and It'll be fun, and you can see Fogtown and talk to Sean. So, so yeah. let's let's talk about uh, venues just sure. a little yes. bit. Yes, mm -hmm. the the main venue will <coughs> be held at Chemeketa. No, the no. the show the films are showing at the McMinnville Cinema this year, and I, okay. I do want to again plug that we are moving into the Mac Theater. That is our future home when that is done being refurbished. Um, our panel and our breakfast with a filmmaker will be at the Gallery Theater in downtown. Our filmmaker mixer will be at Troon Tasting Room on Third Street. Um, our opening ceremony um, is at Laurel Ridge Winery. And our closing awards dinner featuring Peter Billingsley as keynote speaker will be at the Bindery. So most of the events are in downtown Third Street um, and then just a short five minute drive to the cinema to watch all the great films. So, yeah. Wow. That's, uh, that's quite a lineup. Peter a, Billingsley. Peter Billingsley, yeah. Well, I guess we don't need to really to remind the audience who Peter Billingsley is. He, he's Ralphie. Yes. A Christmas story. All he grown is. up. All grown up. But he's uh, executive produced quite a few films. I mean, he's he's very involved in, uh, you know, he's involved with some of John Favreau's projects and runs his production company with Vince Vaughn. And, you know, he's he's been in the industry a long time. So it's it's... It's his first visit to McMinnville. We're really excited to have him, and so mm -hmm. it'll be a it'll be a fun event hearing so, what he has to say. <laughs> so, has the responsibility of securing these locations fallen onto your lap? Yes, I do have. It is. Um, I didn't reinvent the wheel. Some of these locations have been established um, over the last couple of years. Most notably, uh, Laurel Ridge Winery as our partner to, for our opening ceremony. We moved to the Bindery last year, and it was such a success. There was. We're just continuing with that. Um, Troon Tasting Room also is a continuing partner, mm -hmm. <clears throat> as well as the Atticus Hotel. Right. So yeah, so we're we're trying to integrate here. The idea is to get the festival, you know, as a, a major event um, recognized by McMinnville, and and uh, you know we're striving for that Academy Award qualifying credential. So well, you know. it's a good time uh, <laughs> to be getting in touch and building a relationship with the gallery. They've got a yeah. brand new general manager there, yeah. Gerald, Jared Richard. Yes. And he actually talked about trying to uh, combine the theater as both a, a yes. performance venue and hosting different types of yes. events. Yes, he's been so. very helpful. He's been I've been talking with him for the, almost the entire year with trying to tie in. Um, and for the festival, he's done quite a few things for us. and. We're happy to partner with the Gallery Theater and get them back involved with the festival. So. Uh, I want to touch base a little bit on some on some specific <coughs> points as far as mm -hmm. dates and times sure. and, and yeah. categories and all that kind of stuff. But I want to ask Zach, uh, are you presenting a, a film this year? Yes, uh, I'm excited to have two films produced by my company uh, in the festival this year. Uh, one is another canine companion story uh, about. Uh, Bear, the courthouse canine, who um, he's actually a facility dog who works at a courthouse helping to comfort children who have oh. to testify uh, because oh. they were witnesses or victims of, of violent crimes. So it's, oh. it's, it's heavy material, but the dog helps to lighten the mood always. And then the other film that I say is produced by my company, but I actually wasn't a director or, in, or much of part of it at all. It's a a short doc about the Rock and Roll Camp for Girls, uh, which was their 20th year, founded in Portland. Now there are Rock and Roll Camp for Girls all over the world, but the original one is in Portland. And uh, a team, an all-female team from my company, was able to go in and document the 20th summer of the camp. And it was really uh, interesting to see. There was There's a feature doc 
made about the camp like 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting to look at how much the conversation around gender has evolved in the last 15 years. You know, um, there's a lot of talk about pronouns and a lot of talk about yes. whether it's even appropriate to say it's for girls anymore and who identifies as a girl. And so it's a pretty interesting piece that I'm excited. That's going to be the, the world premiere of that piece at the, oh, the festival I did not, this year. I didn't realize that. Well, Wow. Breaking news. That's great. <laughs> I heard it here first. I did with it. <laughs> That's great. Wow. Uh, yeah, I hadn't heard of that organization. Um, it's, it sounds absolutely fascinating. With the, the canine film, were you uh, actually the, the director and yeah, that called one, the shots for the, yeah, that, that film? Yeah, that one, um, you know, I would say I was a co-director uh, with Michelle Williams, who, who works at Canine Companions and kind of helped set up the the whole story for us but uh uh it took place actually in the i hope i get this right the contra costa county mm -hmm. uh courthouse which is That's in the correct. bay area mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh so we went down there to film for a few days and hang out with the district attorney and meet bear and meet some of the kids that bear has worked with so yeah i was i was very involved with that one i i shot a lot of it and i was involved for is, it. is bear going to be up here I don't think Bear's oh. going to make it, but we are going to have some dogs from yes. Canine Companions at the screening there to yep. greet visitors as they arrive and to uh, join us for the Q&A to answer any questions. Now, are canines in courthouses uh, a, a fairly common feature these days? Good question. I don't think it's common. Um, I think it's probably becoming more common, uh, but I, no, I don't think that many, that's a great question. I don't think many courthouses have it, but mm -hmm. I know a lot of them like wish they had it. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of attention around Bear and a lot of other district attorneys in the area were sort of inquiring about how could we get a dog like that mm -hmm. in our courthouse. So. Mm -hmm. oh. Was he easy to work with? Yes. Bear was very easy to work he with. He was a takes, total diva. He was like, <laughs> well, yes, you know, he's a superstar. Yeah. But he takes direction well, and he's uh, pretty lazy, frankly, most of the time. <laughs> so, yeah, easy to work with. For sure. I'm really looking forward to seeing your films. Well, thank this you. Year. Yes, I'm sure. going to try to get to as much of the festival as I possibly can. Great. But it's a busy world these days. It and is. It's not always possible <laughs> to see everything you want. <laughs> so as far as, okay, dates, times, dates, let's, let's start yeah, there. Yeah, sure. So um, the dates of the festival this year are February 23rd to the 26th. Uh, the evening of the 23rd is our, what we call our soft opening. It's um, our college evening, our locals and college showcases. Um, we have a block from Portland State University Film Program and also a block from Pacific University Film Program as well as a sh uh, college showcase um, open for schools nationwide. Um, and then we roll into uh, the festival starting Friday with our, do you want me to go through all the times or? Sure. <laughs> okay. Get out your pencils and paper, everyone. <laughs> it might be easier just to direct people to the website <laughs> to look That's at the schedule. Good, okay. Uh, but in general, you know, um, you know, some of the categories that covered on Friday are environmental, um, which we have an excellent, all the films are excellent, but one in particular, Blue Room, was just written up in the New York Times. Mm. Um, then we have our Oregon Filmmakers, which there's a lot of wonderful films in that block, and a lot of the filmmakers will be in attendance. We mm -hmm. go to Laurel Ridge, drink some wine, we come back <laughs> for mm -hmm. drama. Our first drama block is on Friday evening at 7. And then our experimental, a bit strange avant-garde films will follow that block. Um, early Saturday morning, sorry Zach, at 9.30 is the documentary block. Um, mm -hmm. Excellent films in that, in that category this year and, um, and we'll have the dogs. <laughs> the canine companions will be present. Mm -hmm. um, and then we move through another drama block, panel discussions, wine, more wine tasting in the afternoon at Troon. Um, and then LGBTQ, which is a new category mm -hmm. for us this year. Um, drama and then our horror block is in the evening on Saturday at nine it's a two-hour block it's it's great this it's year. not a midnight show yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, and then and then on Sunday we have breakfast with a filmmaker and then we have a very special thing that we're doing this year clay dream we're showcasing an encore presentation of clay dream which is a feature documentary about Will Vinton um, it opened at the Tribeca Film Festival and um, did a very short theatrical run, but didn't make it to McMinnville. So we are bringing it to McMinnville to, to show to show it the community here. It's being sponsored by Visit McMinnville, 
the director, Mark Evans, will be in person. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really excited to bring this to McMinnville. And um, it's followed by our animation block. If you buy a ticket for Clay Dream, it's, you automatically are, are able to also screen with uh, the animation block. We have um, an Academy Award nominated film in the animation block. Oh, wow. My Year of Dicks, uh, it is nominated this year. Um, and then um, we close with our Native American block, um, which are short two films in that category were shortlisted mm -hmm. for Academy Awards. Yeah. Um, so, and then we, we go to the bindery and we drink more wine. <laughs> of course. And we let Peter take over and let him talk and, mm -hmm. and enjoy the closing ceremony and give our awards and, and, yeah. and get to hang out with all of our f filmmakers. So, but there, yeah. was a, there was a <laughs> film made um, it's been close to a year now, just a short film. Uh, about the reacquisition of native land uh, mm. at the Oregon, in Oregon City at Willamette Falls, mm. uh, where the, for a century there's been a paper mill there, uh -huh. and it's gone, as is the paper mill in Newburgh, and that's been reacquired mm. uh, by, by the Native Americans as well. Mm. And I, I got to do a little voiceover <laughs> with the, with the I, I was the voice of, of William Clark okay. <laughs> talking about, um, I forget fun. what I talked about, but it was a lot of fun, yeah. a lot of fun doing that. So I hope there's a, a, a good number of entries from that, that category. We did, I mean, we always have a strong uh, selection of Native American uh, uh, films that come in and we are, one of our sponsors and supporters are the Confederated Tribe of Grand Rhone. So we, you know, this is an important category for us and, and um, you know, really try to show their respect and, and, and really um, push uh, Native American filmmakers to, you know, a higher visibility um, that they often overlooked in larger festivals. So, you know. I, I'm telling you, it is just amazing that in its 12th year, if you'd have been here in the first year, <laughs> There were a total of about ten films, yeah. uh, all local. Uh, I and I'm a, a personal friend with the with, with the winner of that one. <laughs> so he had an he, in, right? He, <laughs> he, he works in the studio, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and but it was, it was very uh, very local. I mean, one of the films was yeah. a ten year old showing how to crack a whip in the backyard. I mean, that, <laughs> it's come a long way. Yeah. And Film Freeway, I think, had a lot to do uh, with that. Film and Freeway of course, streamlined everything for all the festivals, not just ours. It, it, it's and, made a huge difference. <laughs> and, and Dan and Nancy Morrow, who, yeah. who, who started the whole thing. They, and, they kept and, it together. They're wonderful. They set the precedence for this festival. As a right. filmmaker myself, and now being on both sides, I mean, I just want to replicate for all of our filmmakers exactly how I felt as a filmmaker and what Zach was mentioning at the top of the show. I mean, you... You walk in, and they knew, I they knew who I was. You know, you don't really get that at a lot of festivals. They mm -hmm. knew my film. They knew who I who I was, and that just meant so much. It just set a whole different tone for the rest of the festival. And they were just so, it was just a very warm, friendly, really fun festival to attend. So we're trying right. to just keep doing that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've read so many uh, <coughs> warm accolades on, on yeah. the website from people who've experienced the McMinnville Short Film Festival. So. I, I feel fully confident that that's going yeah. to continue <laughs> with, with, with you and Zach being yeah. in, involved in the festival. One more time, let's get yeah. the dates of the film February festival. February 23rd to the 26th. Um, everything on our website, uh, the schedule, how to buy tickets. There will be tickets. You can buy tickets at the door. All the, <clears throat> all the festival details, www.mcminnvillefilmfest.org. So go on there and... Uh, you can email us if you have any questions, but all the information should be there. So I okay. really encourage people. We have such amazing films this year. I really encourage everyone to come down. Yeah. Well, Heather, yes. and Zach, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you and for having us. I hope all of you are planning to see the McMinnville Short Film Festival this year. It promises to be just a wonderful extravaganza <laughs> of film. So thanks again for coming. Thank you.